Hi guys, this is a guide to breeding perfect Pokemon in Pokemon X and Y. And um, this is considerably the easiest way to do it. I know I have another video on my channel showing you how to breed perfect Pokemon. But this way is probably 10 times easier at the least. Um, what I mean by perfect is I mean you're going to get 531 spreads. Um, you can get 6. It'll just take you a little bit longer, but most Pokemon don't need the sixth one. Either they're, you know, physical or a special attacker. Very rarely need both. Both will work here, though. Um, and so, basically what happened was some Japanese players realized that the IVs that are passed down from the parents in the daycare are generated before you even put the parents in the daycare. And with that knowledge, we can abuse breeding pretty crazily. And I'm going to show you how to do it. So, first things first, you're going to need a lot of parents. Uh, in this video, I'll pretend I'm trying to get a perfect Pikachu, um, which means I don't want the attack stat. I want everything else to be 31, but the attack can be whatever. Uh, what you're going to really want to do is get a lot of parents with um, 31s in different stats. As you can see, each of these Pikachu have a couple 31 stats. Um, they're put in like different places. You don't want a lot of overlapping because you're going to need to see what's getting passed down and then pick that kind of parent. So the more parents you have the better. And you want a good spread between male and female. So as far as preparation goes, uh, your parents should already have the desired nature and egg moves you're going to want for your perfect baby. Um, so you're just going to want that done ahead of time. Make sure all the parents are perfect to already give a perfect baby. The only thing you don't need are, are you know perfect IVs on these parents because we're going to abuse some knowledge in the game. Then what you're going to do is you're going to choose two parents, obviously a male and a female. Give one an Everstone to pass down that desired nature. Give the other one a Destiny Knot to pass down five IVs. Um, and when you're choosing the two parents, it's mega important to not have them overlapping with any of their IVs. Any of the IVs. So you're going to want to know all six of the IVs for each of the parents. And make sure you know their HPs aren't the same. Their defense IVs aren't the same. Their attack IVs aren't the same. You want them to be different because we're, we, want, we want to know which stat is coming from which parent. So before we start, I just want to quickly give you a heads up of what's going on so you can wrap your brain around it. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to put parents in the daycare, save the game, get an egg, and check the IVs. Pretty easy. We check the IVs, and if the IVs are passed down in the correct way, so in this case, if attack is not the, is the stat that is not passed down, then we simply just reset the game, put in the right parents, get the egg, and hatch the egg, and we're done. Super simple. Not passing down the attack stat is a 1 in 6 chance, so you can see how fast this process really is. If we, you know, if the parents pass down, you know, everything except for, I don't know, speed or something, that's not what we want. We're simply going to reset the game, reject that first egg, and then this process starts over again, save the game, get a new egg, hatch an egg, check the IVs. So it's pretty simple, um, and if you're looking only for five perfect IVs and you have enough parents, you know, at, at, at max your odds are, you know, one in six each time you hatch an egg, so it really shouldn't take you very long whatsoever. Step one, load the parents. Put two parents you chose uh, into the daycare, and then you're going to ride around until your Pokemon have an egg. Talk to the egg guy, and don't take this egg, but save the game. Um, this is so we can abuse the knowledge of what's getting passed down. We couldn't, you have, to, you have to start off by rejecting the first egg though. Second egg, so we're going to run around again. So this is after we just rejected the first egg and saved. Run around until your Pokemon have another egg. Take this second egg and hatch it. So we're hatching the second egg. Check the IVs of the Pokemon you just hatched. Now, if you don't know how to check the IVs of a brand new Pokemon, the last slide of this presentation has some tips for you. Just head on over there um, and then come back. Or you can just wait with me and I'll get to, the, I'll get to that at the end of the presentation. Um, so here's the first child. Let's just say I put in this male Pikachu and that female Pikachu, all right? I rejected the first egg, saved the game, rode around, got this second egg. All right, I got this Pikachu right here. So for the IVs, we can see that the dad passed down HP, attack, and special defense and the mom passed down defense and speed. Now we know that this Pikachu is going to get five stats because my dad, you know, because one of the parents is holding the destiny knot. 
And this is why it's really important that the IVs don't overlap because we need to know exactly from who which stat came from. So since, you know, the, the dad and the mom have zero overlapping stats, I can tell exactly which stat comes to where. So we have to see if we desire the stats passed. We're looking for 31 and everything but attack. We got 31 and everything except special attack. This means that the special attack stat was not passed down. Destiny Knot passes down five IVs. The sixth IV is the one that's not passed down, and in this case, for this egg, the special attack stat was not passed down. That's why back here you can see the special attack stat is in black. It wasn't passed down from either the dad or the mom. That's not what we want. We want every stat to be passed down from the dad and the mom except for the attack stat. This is not the spread we want. So what do we do? Since this is not what we want, we reset the game. You saved last time after rejecting the first egg. Now we're going to ride around until there's a new egg. Reject this new egg and save. So we're just, we're just advancing an egg cycle every time we do this. So now, after we've rejected the second egg that we at first hatched, and then we reset. So we had hatched the second egg, we reset again, rejected that second egg, now we're saving again. Now ride around again for a third egg. Take this third egg and check the IVs of this new Pokemon. This is the same exact process as we did the last time, just like I said, one egg cycle further. Second child here. Okay, so same parents still in there. Now we can see that the, uh, the baby Pikachu inherited HP and defense from the dad, and special attack, special defense, and speed from the mom. This is perfect. Remember, we're looking for the parents to pass down every stat except for the attack stat, because we really don't care about the attack stat. Do we desire the stats passed? Yes. We're looking for our 31 and everything but attack. The attack stat was not passed down. This is exactly what we want. Do not save your game. We're going to abuse the knowledge of what's about to get passed down from the parents to get ourselves a perfect Pikachu. So, reset your game right now. We didn't save. You, you check the IVs. You don't save. Reset your game. We now know what is going to be passed down to the next child that is generated. We know that the child is going to receive HP and defense from the dad for this next egg. And we know that the child will receive special attack, special defense, and speed from the mom for this next egg. This is because of the way the, you know, the, the people made the game, Nintendo made the game, or Game Freak made the game. The IVs that are going to get passed down are generated before you even put the parents in. So we know, since we just reset the game, we know that this next egg is going to pass down HP and defense from dad, special attack, special defense, and speed from mom. This is a very simple, and this is why you need a lot of parents, though. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put a male that you had, one of your male parents, from your box or wherever, that had perfect IVs in HP and defense, and put a, a, per, uh, a mom with 31 IVs in special attacks, special defense, and speed, and put those two guys into the daycare. Now, don't forget to switch out the Everstone and the Destiny Knot to these two new parents, so you get the desired nature and you're passing down five IVs, but... By putting in this male, we know that he's going to pass down the HP and defense. So if we have a, a male with perfect IVs in those two stats, we know it's going to get passed down. Same thing with the mom. So we put this new, the new two parents in there with the Everstone and Destiny Knot. Do not forget to put those on the new guys. That's really important. Then you're going to bike or run around until a new egg is generated. Since the game determines which IVs are going to be passed down, you're going to have those five passed down to your new baby Pokemon. And here's what it's going to be like. We switched out the dad for this top Pikachu. We switched out the mom for that bottom Pikachu. Or Actually, that could have been just the same Pikachu because she had that spread anyway. Anyway, those stats are all passed down. And, and that's how we're going to get this perfect Pikachu. See, the attack stat's still randomly generated. That's perfect. But since we had checked the egg before and we knew that the dad's passing down HP defense and the mom's passing down those last three... We were just simply able to replace the parents and then get these guys passed down. So, tip for checking IVs. Um, if you don't know how to check IVs for your Pokemon, this is kind of essential for this method. Since the IV judge in Keyloud City doesn't tell you exactly what the IVs are of your Pokemon, you're going to need another way. He just says, oh, it's awesome, or oh, you're terrible. To test the IVs of a newly hatched Pokemon, give it rare candies until it's around levels 20 to 30. The higher the better because it, it'll be more accurate. Uh, at lower levels, it's harder for an IV calculator to tell what exactly your IVs are. 
then simply you're going to go online, Google IV calculator, and you're going to put in the stats of your Pokemon. If you're a more advanced player and you know what EVs are, you can go and you can physically train it in the wild and keep track of those EVs and plug them in. But if you don't know what EVs are and you start training your Pokemon, you, you, you get it up to level 20 or 30 by fighting stuff, then you're going, your number is going to get messed up. So it's really simple if you just straight up give it rare candies until it's level 20 or level 30. And then check its stats into an IV calculator. You can then simply reset your game to get your rare candies back, so don't worry, you're not wasting rare candies every time you do this. And rare candies can be bought with Pokemiles, so they're kind of a renewable resource. Anyway, um, thanks for watching, guys. This is a pretty simple process to get a perfect Pokemon, and I appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions, comment below. I read every comment that's written on all my videos. Sometimes it's kind of getting hectic, but I do it anyway, because I kind of like reading them anyway. But... Thanks for watching, and you guys are awesome. Good luck with your breeding.